Hi, hello, hi. I had a lot of you ask me to make that video about ADHD and how I study with ADHD, so I'm gonna try to do that today. Hopefully it's not gonna be really scattered. I always feel like I leave things out in my videos. So this is just gonna be a really uh, brief version of the video, and then it's kind of like, I'm going to see what it is that you would like me to elaborate on, and then maybe I'll go into that in more detail. So anyway, the way that I study is, so for example, this semester I took psychology, and the way that I studied for tests was really, I I needed to answer questions. So I would prepare study guides. My, my study guides are just questions. Sometimes there are questions in the textbook. Sometimes uh, textbooks at the end of every chapter will have like a review page where you can answer questions and stuff like that to quiz yourself. Sometimes there'll be questions that the teacher has actually posted online or like assignments she's given us. I mean, and, and some teachers actually put up a study guide for the test where you answer the questions and those are beautiful. I oh, bless, bless those teachers. So that's what I do. I will either add up the questions in the textbook. Sometimes I will literally, let's say it's a, like a test on three chapters and each chapter at the end of the textbook has like 20 questions. I will answer all, like I'll take all those questions, put all those questions on my study guide with full answers and pictures and I will do that like I'll make the study guide then I'll refine the study guide then I'll retype the study guide then I'll write the study guide by hand then I'll orally try and remember by heart answer the questions that I have on the study guide like that is how I study it's a lot I do a lot I overdo things I'll take down any anything in the chapter like I, I usually ask the teacher before the test like let's say if the textbook has questions at the end of it at the end of each chapter I will show the teacher the questions and I'll say, is there anything on the test that I should really know that's not going to be in these questions or will it be enough if I answer the summary questions at the end of the textbook? And if there's anything like the teacher's like, you know, you should really know the diagram on this page or let's say we're learning about cells, you should really be able to name all the parts of the cell and what they do, stuff like that. And even if they tell me not to, usually if the chapter has something like that, like if it's, we had a chapter on senses, so I will learn how let's say the ear processes sound so like vibrations enter the ear canal all that stuff like literally from the point where the sound enters the ear to the point where it's sent to your brain and then where it's stored in the brain and like how it goes through like the thalamus and how it goes to the audio cortex and like you know how those two are different and you know i just i will overlearn, and it sounds exhausting because it is but that's how i study and that's how i get a hundred percent on things or as close as i possibly can i can't just half study because my brain will not retain information so i need to really really drill it in there so yeah repetition helps for me having to answer the questions not only on paper but then let's say i'll have my girlfriend read the question to me and i will recite the answer to her and she'll tell me if i got it right or wrong and stuff like that having to teach another person oh that really helps me so if there's a chapter that i'm really trying to learn i will read and write and you know do all the things i can to absorb as much information that i can so writing down important points relating how those points link to something else that i've learned that i do remember and then what i'll do is you know well i'm driving with my girlfriend in the car whatever i will teach her about it which she enjoys she's not being held against Against her will she likes when I do this so I'll teach her about the senses for example and how we see or how we hear or I'll teach her about the nervous system so like the central nervous system versus the peripheral nervous system and what they are and what they do and then the parasympathetic nervous system the sympathetic nervous system the autonomic like I just I just it just keeps going like I talk to her about all that stuff and she's into it because she's also interested in science and studying science we like to teach each other things and uh, that really helps me learn the material better because I'm teaching it to someone else and then I realize when I get stuck on something if I'm naming let's say all the parts of the cerebral cortex and I can't remember one of them then I'm like well I need to go back and I need to remember that one and then when I go back and look at that let's say one part of the cerebral cortex that I forgot I'm going to remember it because I'm going to go to my girlfriend and be like okay so this is the one I was missing so what I was saying is that this part, this part, this part, this part are responsible for this, 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 and this, and that's why, whatever the hell, like, I remember it because I'm teaching it, and in teaching it, it really helps me find out where my gaps are and where I don't know the information. Because then that other person who doesn't know anything about it or knows very little about it will ask you questions, and you're like, well, uh, I don't know. And then you go and find the answer, because they have their own questions. They have questions that you might not even realize, like, oh, I, did. I should probably know that. I should probably know how that works. Damn. So having another inquiring mind really helps. And number three, I guess I'll, I'll, I'll do three in this video, like three things I do to study, would be um, more about strategying studies. Uh, strategying studies. Studying strategies. So for me, specifically, what really, really, really helps are my noise-canceling headphones. 
Um, I have the Bose Quiet Comfort Series 2 headphones. Uh, somebody... You're rude. Somebody bought them for me for Christmas this year, and I am so grateful. Thank you so much for the headphones. They have been a turning point for me in terms of what I could do and my limitations and just, oh... You're dramatic. Big, loud, screaming baby. I know. I know. I can't believe it. Do you want to scream at the nice people? So being given a quiet environment makes a huge difference to me. The noise canceling headphones and being in a room where nothing else is happening. So like, even if I'm really focusing on my own thing, if there's, if there are things happening around me, I cannot help but even just subconsciously on like on a different level of my brain, absorb what's going on there. And that does kind of inhibit me from remembering things as efficiently as I otherwise would because it is a distraction. I just, I, you know, some people think it's as easy as just like, well, you know, just don't let yourself get distracted. It's like, I. I don't get to choose that. If I'm making a loud noise and I just tell you like, just don't, just don't listen to it. Don't, don't let yourself hear the loud noise. It's like, but I, but I do. Okay. So I can't help but be distracted and that kind of divides my brain and divides its ability to do things. So my suggestion would be, you know, uh, some libraries at schools will have like quiet rooms or um, group study rooms. You can reserve those for yourself. You could just be one person. If they have an issue, you could just tell them like, let's say, you know, like I have a learning disability and I need a quiet room to study in and you know, I need to, I, I need to talk out loud when I study. That's a big thing for me. I need to be able to talk. While I'm studying, I talk to myself. I'm not having like conversations with myself. I'm just, I'm reciting the information, saying it out loud. I'm not reading it out loud, but just reciting it because I'm finding the information in my head and then I'm sending it to my mouth, which, you know, oftentimes there's like a connection between where I'm thinking something and where I say something where some information is lost. And that same connection where the information gets lost when I say it will also get lost when I write it. So like at a, at a test, I will know the answer, my brain has it, and then it just gets lost on its way to my arm. Like I'm writing it and as I'm writing it, the next parts have just, they, they've come too quickly in my mind and I can't, I can't catch them in time. So reciting what it is, like reciting the answers and all that stuff over and over again, even though in my mind, I know the answer. If someone were to say it, I'm like, yeah, well, obviously I know that. It's different to just just be able to like spew out that information because it does sort of get lost inside me somehow. So those those are all of the tips that I have, you know, for now for um, studying with ADHD. I could elaborate more on any of those points if you'd like. I can make more videos about this. There are a lot of other like tiny things that I do, but it, this is just sort of like a general what has helped me. And of course, my ADHD medication has helped me as well, but I've already mentioned that before. So I am on Vivence or Vivance or however you pronounce it where you live. Uh, that's it. So uh, let me know what else you'd like to see. I hope I'm not bombarding you with like all of these like health and mental health videos and stuff like that. It's just that, you know, a lot of people have asked the question and I felt super alone when I got these diagnoses. So I don't want you to feel alone. And uh, yeah, that, that's it. If you want trans things, just let me know and I'll go ahead and go over them. So I hope you enjoyed this and I hope you take care. All right, love you, bye.